Bismillah Rahman Rahim. So today is the third lesson of this course, and today we will start with the lesson four of the Rosul Logatil Arbiya, which is also known as Medina book. In this lesson, you will learn about prepositions. Preposition in Arabic are known as Haruful Jara. So you will learn about them. Then you will learn about the Arabs of the Isam. So the question what is Arab? The last vowel of the word is called Arab. So in for example look at this word Jadidun. So here Fatta Kasra are the harakat of the word and the last vowel Tanween represent the Arab of the Isam. Similarly Al Bayt Fatta or Sakini are the harakat while Dhamma represent the Arab. In this word bait again, so Fata Kasra represent the harakat of the Isam and the last vowel represent the Arab of the Isam. So here the first thing that he is telling you that any Isam which has either Dhamma or the matain any singularism any mufradism which has the ma or the matain at the end is called isme marfu it is known as marfu ism so here al baitu is marfu al jadidun is marfu al baitu is marfu this baitun is marfu this al maktabu is marfu this al waladu is marfu because all of them have either Dhamma or Dhamma Tain. So this means these singular is Asma, these singular nouns are Marfu Isam. Then this word you see has Kasra. This Baitin also has Kasra. This Maktab has Kasra. This Masjid has Kasra. So any Isam which has Kasra at the end is called Majroor Isam. Any ism which has kasra at the end is called majroorism. So here you learn that when any singular ism has dhamma at the end it is called marfu ism. When when any singular ism has kasra at the end it is called majroorism. So the question is when to use marfu form of the ism and when to use majroor form of the ism. So normally, on normal occasion, we use the marfu form of the ism. Al baitu jadidun, al baitu baitun. These are the normal endings of the ism. So you know that baitun mean a house. When you need a definite ism, marfa ism, then you say al baitu, which means the house. And when we we have al, we cannot use the mean. So the question is when to use kasra with it when to use al bayti or baitin so the answer is whenever we have a harfajar whenever we have a preposition then we use kasra instead of fata so here you see al baytu is marfu because it does not have any harfajar before it but in the next sentence the word bayt has a harfajar before it so it become majroor then this baitun is marfu because it does not have any harfajar but when we have harfajar it becomes majroor this maktab is marfu but in the next sentence it becomes majroor because of the presence of harfajar before it so i recommend highly recommend you to pause the video here and read this point which starts from arabic nouns and it finishes at majroor if you don't understand anything from this point, you can ask me. Then you will learn about the two pronouns which are huwa and hiya. So the meaning of huwa is written here which is he. Huwa also means it. Similarly the word hiya has two meanings. First meaning is she and the second meaning is it. So I again recommend you to read this because here they are telling you how to use the pronoun 
Hua and Heya. So you can pause the video and you can carefully read it. Then I also recommend you to read this footnote about the fee. So here in this word fee we have a ya banda because you know that whenever there is a kasra with ya sakin it becomes ya banda so here it is ya banda fee but when after fee we have the word starting with alif lam then we just uh, ignore the ya banda and we join kasra with lam fill masjid so that thing they are telling you here that when we, normally we have ya banda here but when we have a word alif lam which is starting with alif lam then this ya manda becomes silent we join the kasra with lam so i also recommend you to read it in the previous lesson you have learned that the meaning of tanween is a or an but with proper noun we don't use the meaning of tanween in that translation so by to mean a house but in case of Hamid, which is a proper noun, we cannot say a Hamid, but we will just say Hamid without the word a. Now, you also learn that the normal ending of every ism in Arabic is Tanween. Normal ending of every ism in Arabic is Tanween. But here you will learn that proper feminine nouns which is also known as Marfa Moanas Asma with them we cannot use Tanween so we use only one Dhamma with them now we have some vocabulary you need to memorize this vocabulary then write it on your notebook as your homework next we have the lesson 4a you need to look at it later so al baytu mean the house which is marfu when we have our figure it becomes fil bayti so al bayti is majroor because it has kasra at the end normally we say fi which has ya manda but when we have alif lam we say ya become silent fil bayt al masjidu the masjid fil masjidi the masjid in the masjid in the house so here al masjidu is marfu because of dhamma and fil masjidi is majroor because of this kasra al maktabu the table al al maktabi on the table as sariru the bed al as sariri on the bed so here we are shadda so you know you have learned in the previous lesson that shadda makes the alif lam silent it is shamsi harf Aina Muhammad, where is Muhammad? Huwa fil Urfa. He is in the room. Wa Aina Yasir and where is Yasir? Huwa fil Hamam. He is in the bathroom. Wa Aina Amina and where is Amina? Hiya fil Matbakh. She is in the kitchen. Aina al Kitab, where is the book? Huwa al Maktab, it is on the table. Wa Aina al Sa'a, where is the watch? Hiya al Sarir. It is on the bed. So you see, for to represent masculine noun, we are using the pronoun huwa, and to represent the feminine nouns, we are using the pronoun hiya. The marine exercises ajibanila silatilati answer the following question. You can answer this question according to the lesson, or you can answer them according to yourself, no problem, whatever you want. So you write the answers here and you will upload it to Google Classroom. You can also ask me on my WhatsApp if you need any assistance. Ikra waktu ma dabti awakhil kanimad read and write with correct endings of the words. Basically he wants you to write irab on this word. Irab means the last vowel. So here we don't have any vowel so you will say al madrasatu you will put dhamma here. Here we have a harfajar. So Fil madrasati, so you will put kasra here. Fil bayti, al baytu, al ghurfatu, al hamamu, fil madbaki. So you will put irab on these asma, these nouns. Ikra waktu, read and write. At talibu fil jamia, ar rajulu fil masjid, ainat 
تاجر ہوا فت دکان القلم المکتب دا اسٹوڈنٹ از ان دا یونیورسٹی دا مین از ان دا مسجد ویئر از دا مرچنٹ ہی از ان دا شاپ دا پین از آن دا ٹیبل ائی نہ زینب ویئر از زینب ہی یا فل غرفا شی از ان دا روم آئی نل ورک ویئر از دا پیپر ہو وال المکتب اٹ از آن دا ٹیبل آئی نل مدر از ویئر از دا ٹیچر ہو وا فل فصل ہی از ان دا کلاس آئی نہ یاسر ہو وا فل مرحان ہی از ان دا ٹوائلٹ اشمس ول کا معروف سما دا سن این دا مون آر ان دا سکائی من فل فصل ہو از ان دا کلاس سو یو نوٹس وین وی ہیو الف لام یا مدہ بیکم سائلنٹ ہیئر وی آر سو جوائننگ لام ود لام آل آل سو یو نیڈ ٹو نوٹس دس پوائنٹ ہیئر ایز یو نو آئی ٹول یو ڈیٹ نارمل اینڈنگ آف ایوری اسم ان عربک از تنوین سو وی یو آر یوزنگ محمد خالد الحمد وی یوز تنوین بٹ ان کیس آف پراپر فیمن ان ناؤن مارفا مونس اسم وی کانٹ یوز تنوین وی یوز آنلی ون دا ما لائک آمینہ تو زین ابو فاطمہ تو اکرا وقت تو ماں دبتی ہے واقع الکلمات ریڈ اینڈ رائڈ وٹ کوریکٹ اینڈنگ سو ہیز ہی وانٹ یو ٹو پٹ اے راب آن دیز اسما سو ہیمی دن پٹ تنوین ہیئر زین ابو یوز دما ہیئر آمین تو یوز دما اٹ از پراپر فیملی ناؤن امارن تنوین سعیدن تنوین فاطمہ تو دما مریم دما علی دم تنوین ان دس وے یو ول پٹ آئی راب آن دیز اسما سو ناؤ وی ول واٹ از دا پیج نمبر پیج نمبر از تھرٹی فور So first you have learned about the two prepositions which are were fi and ala. Now you will learn two more rofe jara which are min and ila. So min mean from and ila mean to. Fi mean in and al ala mean on. Then you will learn more pronouns. Ana mean I anta mean you. So this is basic vocabulary. Then you will also learn about these verbs. Sahaba mean he went. Kharaja he went out. So nothing else about the grammar here. Except one thing. In case of he you remember ya madda becomes silent. When it was followed by a word starting with alif lam. In case of min this noon sakin will become noon fatta in pronunciation. When it is followed by a word starting with alif lam. Like Minal Baiti, Minal Mandrasati, Minal Masjidi in this way. So I again recommend you to pause the video, pause the video for a while and read it carefully. Also read it until here. Now we have vocabulary. You need to memorize this vocabulary and you will write it on your notebook. as your homework at that so rabi fourth lesson so al baitu mean the house fil baiti in the house al masjidu the masjid fil masjidi in the masjid al maktabu the table al al maktabi on the table as sariru the bed al as sariri on the bed So here ya madda becomes silent. Here alif maksura becomes silent because of alif lam. Aina Muhammad. Where is Muhammad? Who wa fil gurfa? He is in the room. I think we have already done D S. We have. I forgot. Sorry. Okay, we were here. This one. Al baitu, the house. Min al baiti, from the house. Al masjidu, the masjid. Il al masjidi, to the masjid. المدرسو من أين أنت؟ The teacher said, Where are you from? من من from أين؟ Where أنت you? Where are you from? 
Muhammad replies, Ana min al Japan. I am from Japan. Al Mudaris, wa min aina Ammar, and from where is Ammar? Aina min where? Muhammad huwa min al Sin. He is from China. Al Mudaris, wa min aina Hamid, and where is Hamid from? Muhammad huwa min al Hind. He is from India. Al Mudaris. Aina Abbas, where is Abbas? Muhammad Kharaja, he went out. Al Mudaris, Aina Zahaba, where did he go? Muhammad Zahaba, Lal Mudir, he went to the headmaster. Al Mudaris, Aina Zahaba Ali, and where did Ali go? Muhammad Zahaba, Lal Mirhad, he went to the toilet. Ajibanila Silatilatiya answered the following questions. So, first two questions are for you. You will answer them according to yourself. Then, rest of the question you will answer them according to the lesson. Then, Ikra Waktub read and write with correct endings. So, you will just put a rab on these. So, here you will put the Ma Al Gurfatu. Here we have her figure. So, you put Kasra here. Because it will become majroor. Minal Urfati. Minal Hamami. Al Mirhadu. Ilal Mirhadi. Like this, you would do it. Ikra Waktub read and write. Min Aina Fatima. Where is Fatima from? Hiya Minal Hind. She is from India. Zahabat Tajiru Ilal Dukan. The merchant went to the shop. Kharajal Mudarisu Minal Fasli was Zahaba Ilal Mudir. The teacher went out from the class and he went to the headmaster Kharaja Hamidun min al ghurfati wa zahaba ila al hamam Hamid went out from the room and he went to the bathroom Man kharaja min al fasl who went out from the class Kharaja talibu min al madrasati wa zahaba ila suq the student went out from the school and he went to the market Khatija to Minasini or Khalid Minal Yaban. Khatija is from China and Khalid is from Japan. Dafil Faragi Fima Yali Harfa Jarin Munasiban. Put in the blanks which are below the appropriate Harfa Jar. So you will put these Harufa Jara in these blanks. Al Kalimatul Jadida new words so you will write their meanings as your homework. Then he is telling you that the word fi ala min and ila these four words are from Harufil Jar. Basically there are seventeen Harufil Jar in Arabic. Four of them you have learnt in this chapter. Next we have a very important lesson of Muzaf and Muzaf ilayhi. So, the word Muzaf is the thing which is possessed. So, in this example, Kitabu Bilal in Bilal's book, Kitab is possessed. So, Kitab is Muzaf, and Bilal is the possessor of the book. So, Bilal is the Muzaf ilay. Baitu is Muzaf because it is possessed, and Al Imam is the possessor. So Al Imam is the Muzafilay. So the thing which is possessed is called Muzaf and the possessor is called Muzafilay. Now there are some rules regarding Muzaf and Muzafilay that you need to memorize. First thing that with Muzaf you cannot use Tanween. So Kitabun Bilalin is a wrong sentence because with Muzaf you cannot use Tanween. Then with Muzaf you cannot use Alif Lam because it is already Marfa by position. So Al Kitabu Bilalin is a wrong sentence. The correct sentence is Kitabu Bilalin. You cannot use Tanween, you cannot use Alif Lam with the Muzaf. You need to memorize this. Then the second thing the Muzaf ilay is always Majroor. In the previous lesson, you learned that when any singular ism has kasra with it, it is called majroor. So, muzaf ilay will always have majroor, will always be majroor. 
like Bilal in Al Imami. So you see, Muzaffile is always Majru. Bilalun, here it is a simple noun, but when it becomes Muzaffile, it becomes Bilal in. So previously you have learned that Harfejar makes the ism Majru. Here you have learned that when an ism becomes Muzaffile, it becomes Majru. So next we have Kitab Uman. Whose book is this? So here Kitab is possessed. So this means the word Kitab is Muzaf. It must follow the rules of Muzaf. Then the word Man mean who. So the word who or whose is the possessor here. So this means it is Muzafile. In the second point you have learned that Muzafile is always Majroor. So according to that the word man should be majroor and we have learned that the majroor is some singular majroor is some always have kasra but we don't see any kasra here question for you why write your answers in the comment now i will tell you why because the word man is not is some the word man is not ism, it is harf. So that rule of majul that any word which has kasra is only valid for singular ism, singular noun. Whereas the word man is not ism, so it does not follow that rule. So the word man is mabni. You will also learn about mabni. So let me tell you if my word is working. So the word in Arabic is called Kalima. Kalima has three types. First is called Ism which is known as noun in Arabic. Second is Fail which is known as verb in English. And the third one is Harf. Harf includes prepositions conjunctions interjections these are included in the category of harf so ism mean noun pronoun adverb fail mean verb and harf mean preposition conjunction interjection such things so you need to remember this and then the second thing here you see the kalima the word is divided into three categories some fail and harf now there is another type of classification of kalima in which is it is divided into two categories kalima here it is divided into two categories the first category is mabni and second category is Morab. So, Mabdi mean those words, those Kalimat whose Arab does not change. Arab does not change. But more of whose Arab changes according to the sentence, according to the situation. So the word like Kitabun, Kitabin, Al Kitabu, Al Kitaba, Kitaban, you see, its Arab are changing according to the sentence. So this means the word Kitab is an example of more up then the word fi ala man things like these does not change no matter what kind of sentence the word huwa the word hiya the word ana so these are known as mamni 
so you will learn about them later in detail inshallah at the moment just remember that kalima has two types according to the irab first is mabni and second is morab then here you have learned the basic classification of kalima in which as kalima has three types ism fail and harf ism includes noun pronouns can uh, adverb like this adjectives also fail mean verb harf mean preposition conjunction interjections so here he is telling you that the word man <coughs> is mabni and it is in the category of harf so it does not follow that rule of majrul it will remain the same <coughs> second thing with the muzaf uh, sometime it will have dhamma sometime it will have kasra sometime it will have dhamma according to the sentence so previously you have learned the examples in which kita muzaf was marfu it has dhamma but now here in this example the muzaf has become majroor because of the harfe jar ala maktabil mudarisi so you see the irab of muzaf changes according to the sentence then the word tahta here the word tahta is not harfe jar but it acts it always acts like ma muzaf so the word tahta makes the next word majroor so you see kitab has kasra maktab has kasra if someone asks you why the word maktab and kitab are majroor here you will say the word tahta is muzaf so they become muzafile and muzafile is always majroor then you know that in arabic the normal ending of every ism is tanween like bilalun shaykhun ustazun in the previous lesson you have learned that a uh, proper feminine noun does not have tanween we use dhamma like fatima tu khatija tu aisha tu here you are learning that when we use the particle ya with the ism then we can't use tanween with it so you, you can't say ya bilalun but you will say ya bilalu ya shaykho ya ustazu <coughs> this thing you might have learned in Quran recitation that this alif is known as hamzatul wasl basically it mean that if it is at the beginning of the sentence then we pronounce it otherwise it becomes silent so here this is a sentence in this sentence this hamzatul wasl will be pronounced because it is at the beginning of the sentence but rest of the hamzatul wasl like this one like this one like this one they will become silent because they are not at the beginning of the sentence so ismul waladi bilalun wasmul binti amina you see this alif is pronounced rest of the hamzatul wasl are silent ibnul mudarrisi tabibun wa ibnul imami tajirun again this hamzatul wasl is pronounced this one this one this one is silent ai nabnu hamidin so here hamzatul wasl becomes silent because it is not at the beginning of the sentence again you have vocabulary that you need to memorize and you will upload it to google classroom so next we have a dars ul khamis fifth lesson we will start it next time inshallah if you have any question you can ask me on my whatsapp or you can ask me in the comment section wherever you want you can ask me in google classroom as well so now i will say ma salama i hope you enjoyed the lesson and i hope you will share it with others ma salama